Hey guys, it's Debbie Potts and I'm back from a two week trip working in Kona on the big island, my favorite place to focus and dive into projects and play in the ocean with warm weather. So I am back to recording some videos. Part of my video focus today is to explain what metabolic testing is. I will be finally doing the Pinoe metabolic testing at rest and active testing, which is an exercise test. And I will be offering that this summer, July, 2023. Ironically, I first met Panos of Pinoe metabolic testing in Kona on the big Island during Ironman Hawaii world championship race week expo on the streets. And we talked multiple times. We've done two podcasts and that was back 2018. When I met him last year, 2022, I thought again about purchasing Pinoe metabolic testing cart and actually made the order and I canceled it. I was like, I'm not ready yet. And I finally just was in Hawaii and thought about it a lot and looked into it. And I'm going to take the big leap and invest in Pinoe metabolic testing because it goes with everything I do already coaching athletes to figure out how to fuel train and perform their best in life and train for their future selves. And it's not just being an athlete getting faster and stronger, but it's also teaching you how you are breathing. Are you breathing efficiently teaching about how to improve the aging process? So just want to show a little minute less than a minute clip, and we'll go into more about what the Pinoy test does. So here's the exercise test. So that is what we'll be doing. Let me get out of here before we go into another video. The RMR test is the resting metabolism test. And so we'll go into that as well. And let's bring this on. So what I'll be doing is doing a resting test to No caffeine. So that's what I am going to be doing, but it's, it's measuring your breath. So we're analyzing your breath. So let's go into 
the report. So this is a report that you will get. And when I'm doing the testing, I'm going to be putting this into a follow-up meeting. So we'll do one coaching call after we do the resting test or the exercise test. If we're doing the combination, the rest and the exercise, which I advise to do the two together early in the morning, that will be two 45 minute coaching calls to review and correlate this data with your nutritional therapy intake form, your exercise. So this is a report you're going to get. This is what this test is pretty amazing. So pillars of longevity. We want to look at mental health, heart health, lung health, cellular health, and posture because posture makes a big difference of how we breathe and opening everything up. So then we'll get a report, an overview here, metabolic fitness, resting metabolic rate, fat burning efficiency, heart fitness, lung fitness. This is just a sample report, not mine. Breathing and cognition, breathing and posture. So you'll see it'll be ranked based on your breath analysis. Okay. So then we're going to find limitations. So I, they call them limitations. I like to say, you know, once we identify your areas of opportunity, then we can balance you out. Remember the body works together as a whole. And if one part is out of alignment, like a, a, a wheel and the spoke is broken, everything's going to be off. So the another, another, another analogy is if the orchestra, one player is off tune, the whole orchestra will be a little off. So we want to make sure we're working as a health optimizer. We want to make sure all the working parts are at optimal level. So if we have a limiter, we want to figure out what that is. And we're going to create a program to improve that one. So here are core metrics for longevity. So they'll break it down, breathing and cognition, the metabolic rate, fat burning ascent efficiency, why it matters and how to improve it. So that's kind of the report talking about fat burning efficiency with your exercise, how to improve it and nutrition. I'm going to add in my other elements of the holistic method. So looking at someone's nutrition exercise, but also how are you sleeping? How are you managing your stress? How are we identifying internal sources of hidden stress as with functional lab testing on my additional coaching programs and then movement throughout the day. When I track people on their training peaks, I'm looking at their aura or whoop score to learn more about that. But your sleep scores, your heart rate variability scores, all that's so important to kind of collect more data to figure out how to improve your program. So medicals history, your training history, that's nutrition history going over that. Here's the next report, metabolic fitness. So it is going to help us learn how your body converts nutrients, fats and carbohydrates into energy the energy it needs to move and sustain its vital functions as in brain, heart, and lung function. How do we measure that? The metabolic fitness score is calculated by combining the resting metabolic rate and the fat burning efficiency scores. So the tests will be done. It's uploaded to an app, Panoe, and experts and myself will help figure out what the recommendations are for you. The report here, for example, says exercise, resistance training, interval training, or endurance training. What do you need to focus more of? So if we need more strength, hypertrophy training, some of the most important modalities for increasing metabolic rate, this is because they promote muscle mass development and reduce your movement economy, making your body burn more calories while moving. Or do you need more interval training, high intensity interval training zone five, improves mitochondrial density and fat burning efficiency. Also factors in the metabolic health area we want to improve through interval training. Interval types of in lower intensities have more moderate impact. So testing and not guessing, right? So we're looking at what are your goals? What is your condition now? What do you want to be training for? Maybe it's a, the life, the race of life, the endurance of life. But endurance training, we can see too, do you need improvements in that area? So low intensity, steady state as zone two is far the most powerful mechanism for improving mitochondrial function and enhancing fat burning efficiency. But then it's not exercise alone, right? I would say you can't out exercise poor nutrition habits or supplement 
out supplement poor lifestyle habits. We need all these in play. You can't do one and not the other. So if you have horrible stress management, your life is just chaotic. You're living around life as a race. You're not prioritizing your sleep hygiene routine, not prioritizing how you start the day to optimize your sleep. This exercise program does not work, right? So you're still going to have some limiters and nutrition is going to depend on everybody. So I also will put this information. If you're doing my other programs, I add in lab testing where clients, I order the test, but they pay the lab directly, take the test themselves. So it's self-testing, but let's look at vibrant wellness food zoomers. How are you reactive to different parts of a food as dairy, nuts are common one, corn, and of course wheat. I have everyone do look at leaky gut, look at LPS to endotoxicity toxicity in your gut all these markers, then look at a GI test, a stool test, look at a a urine test as organic acids test, or maybe we want to do the Dutch test to look at hormones and cortisol, melatonin, and other metabolites. And then we want to look at just your regular blood chemistry, but look at a comprehensive panel and the full thyroid panel, look at insulin, C-reactive protein and magnesium or not magnesium, vitamin D, uh, and then hair tissue mineral tests. That's where we'll look at magnesium, potassium, different minerals and keeping them in balance. So we want to look at lifestyle habits, sleep. Are you getting enough sleep, but good quality sleep to keep your hormones, metabolic health regulated? I just got, as I said, back from Kona last night and I went to bed with three hours time difference. Um, my sleep score had 31% deep sleep and my HRV was 133 on my aura ring and my resting heart rate's been down to 39 to 41 lately. And it was so nice to sleep in your own bed with a cold room. I was hot sleeping where we were in this condo in Waikoloa on the big island. And I finally had good deep sleep. So uh, not enough sleep, but good quality sleep. So how you start your day is important. And eating, overeating, when to eat, timing of eating, time-restricted eating. If you're getting eight to 12 hours, athletes fasting 12 to 15 hours. And when appropriate, we can go a longer fast on your active recovery day. But what should you do as a unique individual instead of this one-size-fits-all approach? We can identify that with this metabolic test. So reducing stress, avoid overfeeding. Lots of information here on your metabolic fitness. Okay, and then we roll into the resting metabolic rate. What is this? So the resting metabolic rate report score will give you information on how fast or slow your metabolism is your body burning more or fewer calories than is predicted based on your weight, gender, age, and height. So often we do intake forms. We'll do, uh, different calculations to figure out your calories and active look at your activity level, look at your estimated basal metabolic rate and all that. But this, we can find out a little bit more where you are. So we measure on Panoe your met resting metabolic rate with the device using an equation, the Harris-Benedict equation, resting at metabolism rate value is calculated based on your age, gender, weight, and height, and is referred to your predicted metabolic rate. But also we're going to look at how you're breathing at rest. And I like to measure, are you burning mostly fat at rest? Or are you burning more carbohydrates? That also gives me a lot of information on how, not just what you're eating, but how stress level, how much stress you have in your life and your sleep too. So the holistic method is designed for a reason. So we'll find recommendations from this report from doing this test, right? So we're going to say exercise. Do you need more resistance training? Do you need more interval training? Do we need endurance? So that's going to help us figure out your personalized exercise program. And then we'll get more information on nutrition. And I like to add in the food sensitivity test, as I said, vibrant wellness, Cyrex labs, a little more expensive, but another good one and figure out what foods you should eat or not eat. But then also genetics, if you're doing a keto lower carb, are you more sensitive to saturated fats. We need to limit those and get more of a, a keto Mediterranean diet. And then for females that are hormones, having their menstrual cycle, we want to match the days of their cycle. So we're going to do more hormone 
feeding days, as Dr. Mindy suggests, around your ovulation for estrogen and then progesterone feeding days that last week of your cycle. So those will be non-keto foods because they're a little bit more of nature's carbs as having what I just ate all week, papaya and pineapple and sweet potatoes, or I had purple potatoes and enjoyed the nature's foods from Hawaii. Seaweed, Brazil nuts, great for your thyroid, but that's going to be your best source of selenium. And then seaweed is good for iodine. So great two foods for thyroid health. So imagine we could take this information from your metabolic resting and exercise test, put it together with your labs. How's your thyroid health? How's your inflammation in your body? How are you doing with your microbiome diversity? Do you have hidden internal sources of stress that are impacting what we say hidden stands for hormones, immune dysfunction, digestion, detoxification, energy, and nervous system, your neurotransmitter production. 90% of serotonin is made in your gut. So if your gut is a total disaster, well, you're probably feeling kind of crappy because you're not making those feel good serotonin neurotransmitters. And also for not eating protein and for not digesting protein that will limit us from making amino acids. So we'll find out more lifestyle recommendations. If you need to add more protein, which most people do as protein rich diet can increase your muscle mass more muscle, you have more metabolically active tissues you have, and that will help increase your metabolism. We want to avoid extreme dieting, especially with athletes. We tend to do a lot more exercise than a normal person. And we also tend to do too much fasting, which ends up as myself, not eating enough. So we have that low energy availability, LEA, especially females, we tend to eat too little. So we want to prioritize protein, figure out your fats, and then your carbs will vary based on your exercise intensity. And for female cycling, ovulation time, late luteal phase, you're going to have a little more carbs. So that is another part of the report, fat burning efficiency. This is going to represent the ability to burn fat as a fuel source at rest. So this is measured your resting RER value closer to 0.7, that RQ value to reflect higher fat burning efficiency score. Whereas resting RER values closer to 1.0 reflect low fat burning efficiency score. And 1.0 is going to be where your carbs are being burned hundred percent. So you never burn hundred percent fat. You're always burning fat and some carbs, but we can be hundred percent carb fuel. So recommendations to improve it. So based on your results on this report, fat burning efficiency, will say, okay, what type of exercise do you need? Interval training, endurance exercise, where do we need to improve? So what are your specific areas of opportunity? And then let's look at nutrition. This again is a sample report. Do you need to have more anti-inflammatory diet, getting more omega-3 fatty acids as in fatty fish as salmon? wild caught, not the, not the uh, farm raised fish is gross. So high burning fat, high fat burning efficiency levels can help with the foods you eat as well as how you train, how you manage your stress, how you sleep. So cacao has great antioxidants, promote gene expression that stimulates fat burning coffee, but not too much. Remember the Goldilocks effect for everything. Coffee enhances fat burning, making moderate coffee drinking two to three cups. I think two cups is enough for most people, a helpful booster for your metabolism early in the day, not after 11 or 12 in the afternoon. Usually meal timing lifestyle on meal timing, scheduling most of your calories and carbohydrates intake earlier in the day while fasting for at least three hours before bed, which is what I always recommend. Stop eating three hours before bed, because if you track your sleep and notice when you eat or drink alcohol, your sleep score is going to go in the garbage tank. So if you have trouble sleeping, look at what time you stop eating, but also, you know, if you are hungry because you exercise more that day, or for me, sometimes I lift weights at night, maybe take some essential amino acids before bed. And if you're hungry, have a little spoonful of nut butter, or if some people do better with little carbs, maybe a little bit of honey, but depends on the person if they're carb sensitive. And sometimes that gives us clue to other things wrong with the metabolism. They can't metabolize those carbs. So we want to look into just different clues that we collect and figure out the best ideal day for you of timing when to eat, what to eat and why. 
So cold exposure, as you hear all the time about cold, that's a good dopamine hit, makes you increase your brain drive neural factors, and you can feel the energy and helps helps get more brown fat, the brown adipose tissue. So that helps burning more fat. So cold exposure here, it says improves mitochondrial health and thus increases fat burning efficiency. So mitochondria is improved. You'll see you're more resilient. So you'll see that score, your heart rate variability score improve. And if you look at HRV score, if you can test the breakdown with sweet beet, we talked to Rhonda about this or Hanu Health, you can use their program, looking at your LF score versus HF score to see, okay, are you more in balance and more resilient, not in sympathetic dominance? Okay. And then we look at going that same thing, stress management to help that as well, improve that HRV, but reduce stress, implementing stress relieving strategies, such as mindful breathing can help regulate stress hormone levels and boost your metabolism and fat burning efficiency. So really it goes with everything I talk about, right? The holistic method, living life as a race is not ideal. We want to live life as a journey and test and not guess to figure out how can I live my best life as an athlete and an aging athlete and really train for my future self by collecting this amazing data. So we want to look at, you know, what are your goals? Is it important for you to improve your fat burning efficiency? Is that your area of opportunity? What do we want to focus on? Maybe it's heart health. Here's another report. You can measure your heart health. How can you do that? Well, again, I'm going to implement this with my functional lab testing. So let's look at a whole in-depth comprehensive blood chemistry panel and look at signs and symptoms when something is higher or lower than our optimal functional range, not your doctor's ranges, which everybody turns out to be normal. And I want to look at functional lab ranges. So this is going to be measured looking at your cardiovascular fitness and your risk factor for heart related conditions. How do you do this? Well, Pinoe analyzes your heart rate variability biomarkers. What I was talking about before the high and low frequency, looking at the LF to HF, and that will show us low frequency scores is a relationship to low to sympathetic and high frequency because it's always opposite. High frequency you think would be sympathetic fight or flight, but it's actually parasympathetic the rest and digest. So look at the LF and the HF scores. So resistance training, do we need to improve cardiovascular system by doing more of endurance type of strength training program versus less reps or how should you train in the weights in the gym? Interval training, do you need more intervals or less? If we're looking at improving your heart health with stroke volume and heart strength, High intensity interval trainings that zone four, zone five are effective for improving your VO2 max. And this is a key driver for cardiovascular fitness. Or do you need to improve fitness, your endurance fitness? So this is not as effective to do endurance training for heart health, but endurance training can increase stroke volume and improve your cardiovascular and the result of that training. So get the exercise intensity zone two, zone four is important. So I think it's always looking at someone's training schedule. Again, the Goldilocks effect. How do you get in, in your average week endurance workout? Maybe one day you do a long something hour and a half hike Saturday or Sunday. Maybe you're doing interval training two days a week, say that's Tuesday and Thursdays, or maybe you need two days recovery. So maybe you're doing that, uh, hard, high intensity, use your heart mantra because most people don't go hard enough or they don't recover low enough heart rate. So you want to do maybe intervals Tuesday and Friday, and then your long, slow zone two workout on Sunday. And then that'd be Monday, be kind of your active recovery day. So maybe you're just doing a nice easy walk, maybe doing more strength training Monday, Wednesday, and figure out another day or two to do some workouts. So that's kind of something you want to look at nutrition, fruits, vegetables, fatty fish, what are best for you. Again, I will look at people's functional lab test results and blood sugar, look at NutriSense. How does a certain foods impact your microbiome help? How do these foods help your glucose levels stay in balance? So that combination of foods, but specific foods in general can be healthy, but also be not healthy for you. And then lifestyle, of course, not smoking and nutrition, looking at foods with good 
quality fiber, antioxidants, improve your heart health. So sauna is what I love to do, hot and then cold shower. Sauna bathing can decrease blood pressure and improve overall cardiovascular function. So that's a report. All right, lung fitness, another report we're gonna get, really important part. So let me just touch on this one briefly. So lungs condition, risk factor for respiratory related functions, conditions, how do we measure this? This is calculated based on the tidal volume. Tidal volume is the amount of air exhaled in each breath measured during the test. And a reduced tidal volume is a risk factor for developing lung conditions. So remember, Pinoe metabolic test is a face mask. We're measuring your oxygen in and your carbon dioxide out. And then we have the chest strap on, a polar heart rate monitor chest strap. So we're measuring your heart rate with that. So if we can find the amount of air exhaled each breath, that's going to be the tidal volume. And that will help us learn more. So maybe we want to look at your exercise program, adding more breath work, the resistance training, interval training, endurance training. How can we improve that? So that's all in this report. When you get it done, nutrition, lifestyle habits, looking at that and the scientific research links are on the bottom of each page. Whoops. So breathing cognition, another report. This is how you are breathing to think how you breathe impacts your ability to think and perform cognitive tasks. So how do they figure this out? It's calculated based on breathing frequency at rest, breathing faster. And I just did this in my training program last night. If you hyperventilate that reduces oxygen to your brain and thus your ability to perform cognitive tasks would be decreased, right? So if you're shallow breather, hyperventilating, not getting enough oxygen in and your carbon dioxide is not being, it's going, so let's think of that. So you're breathing, exhaling too fast in and out, your carbon dioxide would be higher or lower, depends. So how should you exercise based on that? Well, strength training, that is looking at strength training benefits for cognitive performance. So looking at specific parts of the brain as a hippocampus complex part of the brain role that plays a role in learning and memory, which I need more of, but <laughs> I need more resistance training, but I need more brain health. I think doing the interval training, endurance training, memory and cognition for the growth factor chemicals that promote growth of new blood vessels and cells in the brain. So lots of good information and then nutrition, what food is good for stress fighting nutrients as magnesium, what foods are good to drink as green tea is a stress relieving properties and high content of L amino acid, L-theanine and avocados. Oh my gosh. I have a great picture of avocado and papaya, how rich in colors they are when they're fresh from the land in Hawaii, the avocados are rich in magnesium and potassium, and they, that helps more magnesium helps reduce stress levels, regulating cortisol, breath training, really important here. So breathing techniques to lower breathing rate increases the carbon dioxide levels in the body can drastically improve your cognitive function and reduce stress levels. So the breathing training program can really teach you more and I did a breath work seminar with Laird Hamilton of Laird Superfoods at Expo West a few weeks ago. And we did 45 minutes of breathing, just lying on the floor. And it's just amazing how fast that time went, but how the breathing technique really interesting. If you can do a breath work seminar where you live, it's pretty amazing. And again, cold exposure improves sympathetic nervous system, your vagal tone balance promotes engagement of the parasympathetic nervous system and can improve your cognitive function, mental focus. So then we've got breathing and posture. This report is measured. The breathing and posture scores calculated based on your resting breathing frequency. So that will tell us too, how your, how's your posture. And I can look at people and work on that too. And then add in specific strength training exercises, but the muscle skeletal system, if you've had injuries, if you have low back pain, let's look at your posture 
I watched someone work at the computer or read a book or they're reading their iPhone, our posture is horrible. And we get rolled shoulders forward and our head forward and really see how you age. I don't want to have that kyphotic curve and my head forward like a turtle it does not look good and it doesn't feel good. So it limits our breathing too, if we have bad posture. So we'll work on that. All right. So recommendations there. And then last little bit, metabolic disease risk. Do you have a risk for developing metabolic disorders as pre-diabetes? Again, I'll be doing all the lab work with people. So ideally, you know, do my next level coaching that you're going to do the blood chemistry panel. You can do on Ulta Labs for super cheap compared to other programs at Ulta Labs, Debbie Potts Coaching. You can get 20% off all the time. They have pop-ups for 20% off Ulta Labs. So you can order what you need, but this is going to be measured your ability to use fat at rest, the lower RER, that exchange ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide, the higher the fat burning rate. So remember 1.0 RER value, the RQ value, carbohydrates use. If you're lower number, like 0.70, you're burning higher percentage of fat. So that will lower your metabolic disease risk score. So looking at resistance training, interval training, or endurance training, looking at oatmeal, I wouldn't suggest oatmeal, but type of fibers for your beta glucans, you know, you can get that from mushrooms, chia seeds, but oatmeal is not good for most of my clients because they can't do wheat or they have cross contaminants to gluten. Your body sees as gluten. So I'm going to pull that up. That's Dr. Mary Myers, cross contamination, cross reactive foods. I'm saying the word wrong, but cross reactive foods If you are reactive to wheat, which most people are, and they don't know about it, can cause inflammation and why that happens in molecular mimicry and how your body sees that. But six cross-reactive foods, I just want to touch on dairy products, usually cow dairy, milk and cheese, corn, millet, oats, rice, and yeast. So those foods are what your body thinks is gluten and looking at that with a test or eliminate them, gluten test cross-reactive tests. So looking at gluten cross-reactive foods is something I always bring up to everybody. So looking at the why. Okay. So going back to this report, we want to see what else calorie balance we can figure out. Okay. What are you burning a day? Give estimate on there. macronutrient balance. We can give an estimate here. And I always like to look at, are you getting enough protein? Because most of us know If it's 0.8 athletes, 1.0, as we age, listen to Dr. Gabrielle Lyon and other people, but the Lyon protocol is your ideal body weight and grams of protein a day. So I've been changing my macronutrient ratio, figuring out what people first start with protein and then figure out how to get that 30, 50 grams spread out throughout the day, which doesn't leave us for fasting as long as we were doing in the previous years. And then your healthy fats matching that or going a little lower, looking at your genetics. Some people can't tolerate as much saturated fat. So where your fat's coming from, and then looking at your carbs, nature's carbs, not the crappy stuff and getting that from more the good crucifer fish, fish, vegetables as cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, looking at foods good for your liver and your microbiome. So sweet potatoes, uh, russet potatoes. I was doing purple potatoes in Hawaii but having that maybe in your evening meal, if you're doing more anaerobic workout the next day. So looking at carb timing and then women looking at estrogen building foods, hormone building days during ovulation and late luteal phase for progesterone. So then we can really dial it in. And then non-workout days are going to look different than your workout days. So we can figure that out with this test in my coaching program. And then just retesting every three months would be, I think, great. So that's what we'll be doing on my test. You can learn more on my website, debbiepotts.net. Head to Pinoe, P-N-O-E, metabolic testing starting this summer. And if you want to come to North San Diego, I'll be testing people at their home gym or at some clinics. So looking at all this information, the data we can collect, pretty fascinating looking at your metabolism all the research behind it. So I'm doing three different packages, the fat loss package, where we'll do the resting test. We'll do the body fat testing 
calipers and measurements if you'd like, and then follow up call with results afterwards on Zoom. And then performance package, the exercise test, you can pick what equipment to do it on, do nutritional therapy assessment. Let's look at what you're eating and doing now, what your signs and symptoms are. I'll look at that, put that into results and recommendations with a 45 minute coaching call. And then the fat loss and performance package, both of those combined go to two 45 minute coaching sessions. So the time of doing the test and then my time researching, putting together suggestions for your workout program. I use practice better and training peaks, but those are my programs. You can add them on to my regular co uh, coaching program. So you can look at the website, download sample report right here, and you can learn more. So head to debbiepotts.net and let me know if you have questions for me. See you next time.